Well, folks, this is one of those things that <laughs> I hate to say it. It almost sounds too simple to to even do a video about. Um, I try to keep my videos a little on the technical side, and uh, but um, but uh, questions keep getting asked. And uh, <laughs> although I did a a quite long treatise on uh, clean flight throttle settings, uh, almost probably like 20, 25 minutes of talking. I certainly understand that not everybody wants to sit there and listen to me talk about clean flight throttle settings uh, for 25 minutes. Although between the videos, uh, they've had something like 1,500 views total. So maybe more people than I thought want to hear that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try and uh, keep this short and sweet, at least as short and sweet as I possibly can. And I'm going to talk you through this process, okay? The first thing to do before you do this is you take your props off. Seriously, take your props off. I'm not kidding. Take your props off. If you insist on not taking your props off, then get yourself a current limiting bulb like this. This bulb at uh, 12 to 17 volts will not pass more than about 2 to 3 amps. And what that means is that if your motors try to spin up past a very low idle anyway, the voltage will drop and the whole system will shut down. So if you absolutely, for whatever reason, cannot be bothered to take your props off, at least make one of these and just put it on your battery and then plug it in and if the prop if the motors try and spin up with the props on the uh, the bat the bulb will light and the whole system will shut down okay but seriously just take your props off no more emergency room visits okay okay fine that's out of the way what should you set your min throttle to and what should you set your uh, esc endpoints to and the short answer is that the most important thing is that everybody is in agreement, okay? So if we go to clean flight and we look in the configuration tab at min command and max throttle, these are the endpoints of the outputs that clean flight is going to send to the motors. It is real unfortunate that max throttle uses the word throttle because when we think about throttle, we think about the throttle stick on the input side of the of the system from input from the receiver into the flight controller. And this is an output side parameter from the flight controller to the motors. So throttle is a, it should be max motor PWM, min motor PWM or something like that. Okay. That would be a better name for it, but it's not. That's what we call it. Min command and max throttle are the low and the high end of the motor outputs that clean flight will send to the ESCs, okay? So the, I've set those to 1,000 to 2,000. That's not what the default is. The default, they're trying to match, I think, a Simon K ESC default. It doesn't really matter. Long story short, set this 1,000 to 2,000, you'll be fine. You can set this to a wider value. For example, if you were to set it from 900 to 2,100, most ESCs would still be able to work with that and I think, and you would get slightly more resolution out of your throttle channel. But it kind of doesn't matter. There's only so much resolution that a, a one-shot signal has, and most ESCs, at least BL Heli ESCs for sure, only have around 250 some odd steps of resolution on the input side anyway. So any additional resolution, as long as you have that much resolution, you're kind of fine. I've been told by someone who seemed like he knew what he was talking about, that if you have at least 800 microseconds of difference here. So even 1100 to 1900, you will get full resolution out of a one-shot signal. And just to note, it's not any point in having any more. I don't know if that's true, but the point is, if you just go 1000 to 2000 here, you probably be fine, okay? So 1000 to 2000, and then if we look at our motors tab, and I'm gonna check off this safety here, my props are off, and in fact, my battery's not even plugged in. You'll see that on the bottom end, it goes from 1,000 to 2,000. This is the output from clean flight to the motors, and this is exactly what the PID loop is going to be outputting in order to make the copter do all the things it does. Turn, not turn, climb, descend, etc. And you can see that if I change, uh, change min command to 1,400, which you would never do, but and max throttle to 1,600, and I go to the motors tab, you can see that now the, it's from 1400 to 1600. Okay, so that determines what clean flight is going to output to the ESCs. 
Now the problem is that the ESC also needs to know what it should expect to see from clean flight. Well, why don't they all just agree, right? Why don't we just agree 1,000 to 2,000 is the standard? Because ESCs came about in days when we weren't getting our signal from a flight controller that could just be set to whatever it wants. And you can hear me talk for a half hour about this in my full videos, but the ESC has to be able to receive a signal from directly from a receiver, and the receiver could be getting anything from a transmitter, any wild range of endpoints, and it just needs to be able to be calibrated so it could work properly, okay? So now we're going to disconnect here, and we're going to go to BL Heli Suite. So with my ESCs unpowered, I'm going to select the right programmer. That's the clean flight interface. Uh, that's because I'm using the pass-through on the board, and that's this is the interface you choose for that. I've got the right COM port selected, and I'm going to connect to the programmer or to the board, and then I'm going to power the ESCs. They do not make the startup tone because the programmer has told them, hey, hang on, don't start up, we're programming. And I'm going to hit read setup. They will come in, and you will see, uh, here's my PPM min and max throttle. Now you'll notice that they are not set at 1000 and 2000. There's a good reason for that. There is gonna be some timing difference between the ESC and the uh, clean flight. So the clean flight and the ESCs all have oscillators on them that they use to gather timing data. How long is a microsecond? But those oscillators are not very, very expensive, very high precision. Uh, devices. So when they all look and they say how long is a microsecond, some of their clocks are running a little fast and some are running a little slow. So when you send, when CleanFlight sends what it thinks is a 1000 microsecond pulse, well the ESC might read that as 1024 microseconds or, or whatever. And that's the reason for calibration, okay? Because all these are going to be different. If you don't want to fuss with that, what I suggest you do is set your ESCs to something like 1020 and 1980 and leave it there. Now, why not set them to 1000 and 2000 to match what's in clean flight? The reason I feel like that this is the right thing to do is, let's say that the ESC's clock is reading a little bit off from clean flight's clock and clean flight says, shut the motor down 1000 microseconds. And the ESC reads that as a 1025 microsecond pulse and keeps the motor spinning just slightly, okay? What if the clocks are different and clean flight says, full throttle, give me all the power you got, Scotty, and the ESC's clock is running just a little bit off, so it sees that as only 95% power and you don't get full power out of it. So the idea is that I like to, if you're gonna manually set them, I like to set the minimum and the maximum to slightly inside whatever the clean flight values are, which I suggest 1000 and 2000. And that ensures that clean flight will be able to successfully command zero and 100% throttle. Okay. But I personally, I personally like to do calibration. And the reason I like to do calibration is I just like to know if they are, if my ESCs are off. And if they're off, by how much are they off? So now we're going to go and do a calibration uh, in clean flight. But before we do that, you need to know that you need to have programming by TX turned on. And the reason for that is that uh, if it's turned off, stick, stick calibration doesn't work as well as any of the other uh, transmitter stick programming that can be done. The reason I have this off is that I don't want to accidentally trigger that sometime and mess up my ESC calibration or, calibration or any other configuration settings. So I normally leave that off, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. It's on by default, and I'm going to write the setup. Yours is probably on unless you've turned it off. Then I'm going to disconnect here, and we'll go over to clean flight. I'm also going to unplug my battery. We'll go over to clean flight now. Let's go to the motors tab. We'll bring the master slider all the way up, then we'll plug in the ESCs. That's the tone that means they're now in calibration mode. We're going to bring the master slider down. And that's the tone that means they've read the calibration. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the ESCs now. We'll disconnect and we'll go back in BL Heli Suite and we'll see what the result was.
We'll plug in. We'll read the setup. Now notice all of these are labeling not in sync with master. And the reason for that is, look at the throttle, 1024 to 1976, 1020 to 1968, 1020 to 1964, and 1020 to 1960. Notice that they're all slightly different. And the reason for that is, again, that the oscillators on them uh, are not running at exactly the same speed. Now, it, they're, they're not off by more than, say, one or two steps, where a step is four, milli, four microseconds, okay? So you could leave them like this, and then every time you read setup, uh, BL Heli Suite will say, not in sync with master. You could certainly also just choose to disable this sync option, disable sync min center max, and then it'll show them as in sync, even though they uh, do not have the same min and max throttle. The other thing you can do is you can just say, look, all right, 1024 to 1976, 1020 to 1968, 1020 to 1964, 1020 to 1960. Ah, so we take the max, the largest min throttle and the smallest max throttle and just set them all that way and they'll all be within range and pretty close. It doesn't really matter which, or you could just say, screw it, I'm just going to set them all uh, to, you know, 1020 and 1980. Although, bear in mind, take a look here at this one. This one's at 1960. If I were to do what, what I suggested you do and just set, set them all to 1020 and 1980, this one would run out of top, top end at the very top. When it got 1960, it would be at 100%, but really the clean flight would think there was 20 microseconds more throttle to give. Now, that is not in any way going to affect your flight performance, but it is going to be a, a very small uh, lack of synchronization between clean flight and the and the ESCs. And personally, I, I like to avoid that. So personally, what I do is I run the calibration and I check the numbers to see how different they are. And they're usually not too different. If any of them is is very different than any other, though, hey, good to know. I had one bad ESC that some people are sick of hearing me talk about <laughs> since it happened. It was off by like 50 microseconds. I, I didn't really like that. And uh, then, then the vendor replaced it to, to their credit. You know, so anyway, that's how it goes. That's how you do it. Long story short, set your, set your min throttle or your min command and your max throttle to 1,000 and 2,000, then run the calibration, then turn off programming by TX and, and be happy and go fly. Or if you can't be bothered with all of that, or for some reason your stick programming doesn't work, like for example, if you have one of the early Dodo boards or the Nase 32 Rev 6s that backfeeds the ESCs from USB, you can't do stick programming with that because the ESCs power up as soon as you plug in. Okay, so if for any reason you can't do that, set your uh, clean flight min command and max throttle to 1000 and 2000, and then set this to, ah, let's say 1030 and 1970. You'll probably be fine, and then that'll be that. All right. That's it. Hope it's helpful, and as always, happy flying.